Hey guys, welcome back to the Iron Woodsman. Today we're going to do a very quick and simple and efficient uh, pistol cleaning of a semi-automatic uh, compact style uh, pistol. This one in particular is an HK uh, P2000 SK and a 40 caliber. So basically I'm just going to show you how I break it down and I clean the parts and put it back together and uh, basically it is just uh, more or less a field strip of a of a pistol and uh, those of you out there that uh, may not know may have a pistol may not had anybody show them how to do it of course every semi-automatic pistol uh, a lot of them have a very similar uh, field strip uh, technique but a little, every one of them is just a little bit different. So you actually have to learn your specific uh, pistol and how exactly to break it down. But I'll show you how this one breaks down. And uh, but basically after you get them broken down, it's basically four parts. The magazine, barrel, the slide, and, and then the frame. But uh, we'll just show you real quick and we'll get the ball rolling. With this in particular one, of course, what we'll do is we'll just eject the mag. Mag's full, no big deal. And on this one, of course, the magazine is very clean. But if this magazine was dirty, all you got to do is just take your... Uh, and I, as you can see, I have various cleaning things here. You can get these anywhere, Walmart, a sporting goods store. These are just small uh, cleaning wipes that you can get. They're very cheap. Just a little square wipe. If this uh, magazine was dirty, you just put a little bit of uh, oil on it, a little bit of cleaner. Let me show you right here. That CLP Break Free. This right here is the kind with just the pop lid. This is excellent stuff. This will do it all. This will clean everything that you need to clean on most any firearm. This is one of my standbys. I love this stuff. Shake it up, put a little on the uh, little cleaning pad, rub on, rub it real good, and then use a dryer one to rub it off. But always leave a just very thin layer, I do anyway, a very thin layer of oil all over the metal. I do not like any exposed metal parts that are dry. That's just me though. All right, CLP by Break Free, very good. You can buy this anywhere walmart dunham's any place set it to the side another good cleaner right here otis this is ultra bore cleaner this is good stuff um i don't use this often because i'm so used to break free and frog lube but if you come across otis and you can't find the other stuff this is stuff this stuff is real good too this is a bore cleaner of course um they have the oils that go on the outside of the metal, but I don't particularly have that. Now, as to my favorites, this is Frog Lube. I guess you can see that pretty good right there. This is the Frog Lube Paste. Let me get a little closer. This stuff is all plant-based. It is awesome. I love it. It's the kind of pricey. This is probably about $13. As you can see inside, it looks like it's it's like a paste it's like a just a very uh you know very slippery paste and it smells the stuff smells minty actually and it, you can get this all over your hands it will not hurt you it's not like it doesn't have any petroleum products in it and it does an awesome job of cleaning the parts lubricating all the moving parts and cleaning the barrel out it kind of does it all. If you can find frog lube, which you can, uh, I would recommend getting the tub, the paste right here. If you can't find the paste right here, the this is frog lube CLP. Uh, pretty much same as this, but this is a little bit thinner. This is almost the consistency of, uh, of thin oil. Uh, but it's basically the same stuff. If you can't find one, get the other. You know, you can't go wrong with it. Okay, we got the magazine out. I'm not going to mess with it right now. Set it to the side. Uh, get it out of the light. 
Okay, so the pistol. This in particular pistol right here, as I'll show you. HK, you probably can't see that, but it says P2000SK40 Smith & Wesson. We'll do a review on this pistol soon. It's an awesome pistol, but that'll be a different day. Um, basically, you got your pistol. You got your, you know, your magazine catch. This is ambidextrous right here. Pull it back. Push this up. The tooth hits the slide. The magazine's locked open. Um, that's not how we're going to break it down, though. Shut this right here. Basically, with this pistol, what you do is this. There is a cutout right here in the slide. You push the slide back just far enough, and some of them are a little bit quirky. You just manhandle the pistol. You know, pull that slide back right there until it meets where this pivots. And you push out. Let's see right here. You push this pin out. Let me see if I can get a better grip on it here. Okay, right there. Push the pin out. You pull. There we go. This is your slide lock disassembly pin. On almost every semi-automatic pistol, it has one. You pull that out. You set it to the side right there. Now, what we have is an unlocked pistol. The pin that would hold this slide in place is now out. So what we'll do is we'll slide this completely forward. Look at that. It slides right off the frame. Now we'll sit this down just for a second, upside down. Now, right here is what you have. Uh, almost all semi-automatic pistols, you slide the barrel frontwards. And then you have the lower trigger handle assembly. This is the frame of the pistol. When you get it to this point, do not be pulling the trigger and working this hammer and snapping it if it will do it. I do not recommend doing that. Uh, do not disassemble any of these inner workings right here. It's not necessary. The, there are things in here that are set specifically from the factory that don't need to be messed with. There's springs in here that are under tension and uh, they're all set uh, just like they need to be. So uh, I don't care how experienced you are, uh, at, at one pistol, you grab this thing and you start messing with these springs in here, something's gonna fly out if you mess with it too much, and uh, good luck getting it back together. You don't wanna have to send it off to do that. It's all, But you can clean this, and I'll show you all that. Uh, basically, the slide, you know the heavy slide up here runs along these metal these metal like uh, shelves right here there's two here and then there's two back here on the back these usually get gunked up a little bit dirty because most of the motion of this pistol is sliding back and forth on this every time you shoot it these channels have to be cleaned um, but basically all you do to clean these puppies First, this is imperative, guys. Get a toothbrush. Just take your old toothbrush, turn it in to a gun cleaning toothbrush. You can use this toothbrush over and over and over again. You get it gunky, all you gotta do is take, wash it out, take a paper towel, take an old rag like this. It's always good to have an old rag. Just wipe these teeth out. So several times you can make this toothbrush last for literally a year two years and then just get you another one you know they're cheap so this is a very very effective you know thing right here so basically i'm going to clean these right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take actually let's go with the paste and we're going to reach in here we're gonna whip around in here a little bit. See, I've got a little on the tip there. We're gonna work this thing into these bristles just like so. We don't need a lot, just enough to kind of saturate the bristles. All right, we always have a rag handy. And all you do, guys, just come across the top. These channels, I want you to rub them 
you know, you don't have to do it violently, but come across this whole thing here. I want you to get these little these little shelves clean. I can already see gunk coming off that don't need to be there. This kind of process, a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people are intimidated by this process. There's nothing to it. Um, all you want is to, uh, these these rails. You just want them clean. There's some gunk in the middle there. I'm gonna get that out. Now I've probably shot I don't know 100 rounds out of this pistol, so it's not as dirty as it could be. But basically, we're gonna come along here, come along here. I'll get all this metal. Go down here. Now. Let's see here. See all this in here? All that inside there? Uh, you can lightly stick this thing in here and just get in here, but just don't don't overdo it because you don't want to push dirt down into those moving parts. If you see dirt in there, reach down and grab it. All right, I'm fixing to show you a trick. Take the large, watch this. Take a large cleaning patch larger than that little one right there now twist it over this now reach in here use it as your buffer reach in here again rub a dub dub sorry sounds kind of crazy out of there see look at that look at that see all that that is gunpowder residue and probably who knows, lead, brass, all that junk. We'll just set that to the side. Don't be afraid to go through several cleaning patches. Or just remember, it's your firearm that's important. C cleaning patches, all that stuff is cheap. So you put your finger, get all around. This is where the magazine comes up through the frame. Get all of that clean in there. All of it. And see, when I put that frog lube on the surface, what it does is it loosens all that stuff. Once it gets in there and loosens it, you come back with this and, you know, you clean it. Now you take your patches, run your patches down through here. Look, it's getting filthy already. Run them down these little side channels. You know. You're going to get dirty doing this. Now, if you're squeamish about getting your hands dirty, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you. But you want to make sure you get those channels clean. There should be no, no residue, nothing on any of this. Come down that middle, just like that. And go to another patch, because this is getting filthy. I wish I was outside right now, guys, because I could probably, you could probably see better. I've got every light in this room on, but I feel like you're not, you're not getting a good picture of what I'm doing, but you get the, you get the, uh, concept here. So basically, okay, use your fingernails if you gotta, get down those ridges. When you're done with it, when you're done rubbing all of what you had just applied with the uh, with the brush, it you want it to look dry and look clean. A lot of this stuff. All right. Let's see. I got something in here. Sometimes I use the the tip of the 308 round to uh, help get debris out. That's old school method. Got your 762 NATO round here. It's got the sharp tip. Sometimes you can use it to get into those small places. Yep, yep, just got a piece out. A lot of uh, gunsmiths or quote-unquote, you know, experts will say, don't use a sharp, pointy, you know, high-powered round to assist with cleaning your firearm. Well, you know, to each his own. You know, I've never had one go off in my hand, you know. Throw one in a fire, maybe. Hit the end of it real hard. Yeah, it's going to go off, but, you know. Come on, people. All right. So, all right. We're going to sit that down. For a second. 
we're gonna get a uh, small cleaning patch. We're gonna get this little inside area right here. Make sure it gets clean. This is where the firing pin assembly is. And that has got to get, that has got to get clean. Alright. Okay. As far as the inside goes, we've about got this puppy spick and span. I know I could have paused this and then cut to the chase and then, you know, cut the video, but I just want to show you it does not take long, you know, to get this done. It is not a daunting task at all. You know, okay, look. Now, see, there's a little channel in here I cannot get to. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our, our round here and put it right here. And look, I'm rubbing this, this patch back and forth right here. And it is getting in there where I could not get my finger. And uh, getting that inside clean right there. So, you know. Thank you, ammunition. Alright. So that's... Oh yeah, that's clean. That is clean. Alright, you probably can't see this on the camera, but I think you can see that inside of that is spick and span. And it did look a little bit sketchy. Okay, I'm going to sit this right here. Get rid of this. All right, let's sit the slide right here. Now, the barrel is just pretty much the most important part and the part that gets the dirtiest. So basically with the barrel, I don't know how, the best way to show you, you take your, you take your well-used dirty rag and you go over the barrel, back and forth circular. You go all around the barrel and then you go around the outside where the chamber is. This is the chamber you know, end of the barrel. Well, the bullet and the brass go up in, you know, and then they fire out of this. This is the chamber, bullet chamber. And then this is the barrel. As you can see, it's not very long. I think this may be 3.25 inches, maybe less. Can't really remember, but uh, anyway, get all the debris off of here. These little lips lock into your uh, assembly. Make sure they're clean. That feed ramp, you see that little ramp? That's your bullet ramp where the round that comes out of your magazine, right here, that round runs up that ramp and locks into your chamber. That's, that's what that is. So we're going to set this to the side. All right, now, what we need is we take our cleaning rod and I hope I grab the right one. Let's see. Whoop. Wrong one. Hang on. We get over here. Won't take but a second. Gotta make sure I get the right the right rod here. Okay, so here we go. Now, a rifle cleaning kit has many of these rods that will fit end to end. You can clean a rifle barrel. With a pistol, it's a piece of cake. You just take the rod, take your, this is a 40 caliber uh, or 41 caliber brush. Let's see if you can see this thing up close. Right here, I don't know, focus in, maybe. Anyway, this is a brass tooth brush right here. Very important. Screw it on to the end. You know, fairly secure. Uh, I do not worry about putting, you know, lube on it. But what you do is, you take this, go from the barrel end if you can, just push it down through there, pull it out. Push it down, pull it out. You will notice some debris shooting out of there if it's very dirty. Uh, as you're doing this, with your be be mindful the end of your barrel is a it's it's a a delicate area sometimes you don't want to be gouging if this end is wire and it is 
You don't want to gouge on this very hard. You know, ease it up in here to where it's lined up, then push it through. Hold it steady, push it through. Same with coming out. Don't just be yanking it and everything. You want your chamber and the tip of your barrel to remain extremely um, unscathed. And sometimes, even though this is aluminum and this is brass, the steel is harder, but you don't want to risk screwing up anything. So, you know, don't act like a maniac, you know. You're not, you're not doing plumbing here. You're cleaning an expensive, you know, weapon. Okay, so basically, we've run this up in here, you know, what, a dozen times maybe total, back and forth. All right, so we've gotten all of the, uh, probably the main debris that was down in here, you know, out. Um, so, you know, and, you know, if I'd, have, if I'd have shot, you know, 500 rounds through here, it'd be different. But this puppy looks really clean now. So we're going to take this thing off, set it to the side. Guess what? We're gonna grab our mop. This is a this is a cloth, what they call a bore swab. You can get them anywhere. Uh, I was gonna use a jag on this, but you know jags are uh, you know to find them in a 40 caliber. I, I couldn't find one. Let me make sure I get the right rod. Screw this on here. I don't have one. Okay, here we go. So we got our bore mop, which is extremely cheap. What, three bucks for a bore mop? Maybe a dollar ninety-nine for you know your bore brush. Now, any sporting goods store, Walmart. Well, I won't say Walmart, but uh, any sporting goods store or online, you can order the correct size mop or bore brush for your caliber. Now this is a 40 caliber, so a 41 caliber or a 40 caliber uh, brush or mop will work on, you know, this barrel. If you got a nine millimeter, you know, uh, a 35 caliber or a nine millimeter brush or mop will work on your barrel. Trust me, you know, save the video, you know, message me in the comments, I'll give you all all this information that I can. Still getting used to these videos. I'm not quite as advanced as a lot of uh, YouTubers out there, but I will do anything I can to help guide you through this process. And you know, you probably catch on pretty quick, but some people, you know, they, they like repetition. All right, so frog lube, smear it. I noticed probably, I'm sure you've noticed today, all I'm using is frog lube. I ain't using the rest, but we're not gonna use multiple oils for you know one gun cleaning so you rub the frog lube into the swab all you need is you know maybe not even a half a dime sized you know amount okay so we got the frog lube on here push that bore mop through two or three times right there now you can if the barrel is very dirty you can swab it first with the lube and then come back with the brush because some stuff will be broke up. But this is just not dirty enough, you know, for all that jazz. It's just not needed. Okay, so we've done this a few times. All right, we got more than enough stuff down there. Okay, so let me show you something. To keep things clean, uh, we're going to take a couple of these. Because, you know, you're going to end up putting these swabs back in your, your gun cleaning kit. Any excess dirt or lube on here, just use some cheap swab, just use some cheap patches and kind of dry this off a little bit. That will save you so much, you know, heartache in the future when you're trying to get this stuff back out and everything is, you know, greasy and ridiculous. Okay, so we put this swab back over here. Set this down. Alright, so basically guys, we have we have field stripped and cleaned, you know, the entire weapon. Um see it wasn't it wasn't hard. Uh now we're gonna put it back together, but I'm gonna show you something before we do. We're done with this. Let's see here, let me slide this over. We're still gonna use a little lube. Now what we're gonna do is when we reassemble 
the pistol, I'm real funny about this. We're gonna take, we're gonna take this other rag right here that's fairly dried, is stained. We're gonna wipe our hands off real good. I know that this, this uh, step, a lot of people are gonna be like, you know, why are you doing that? Well, you know, if you got a tiny bit of grit or whatever from all that cleaning, you wanna get that crap off your hands. Okay. I'm just funny about that. You gotta have everything clean. But I can't stress enough, the outside, especially around the, the tip of this barrel, you need to keep lube on there because it locks up inside this slide all the time. We're gonna put a light coating of this stuff right in here right on all of these little hinges basically and the great thing about frog lube is you don't have to worry about it being like a petroleum product you're getting it all over your hands it's okay now your hands are clean when you're putting this thing together so basically we grab the slide all right so what we're going to do is with the slide we're gonna take a little lube and we're gonna rub it all on the interior parts, not cake it. We're just gonna rub a little bit in there, just a little light coating, just enough where you can see that it looks just a little bit slick. Because exposed metal does what? When it gets wet, it corrodes. Of course, most modern pistols, and this HK is included, most modern pistols have a coating on them. This one has an extreme weather coating on it to where you could probably leave it outside underwater for, you know, six months and it wouldn't rust on you because they've got this baked on black finish, which on most upper end semi-automatic pistols or revolvers, you know, that is the case. But as you can see, I'm just wiping the slide down lightly with the frog lube. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be nice and neat because when we get everything thrown back together, we're going to wipe it down. Now, see, look, got a little frog lube here. The claw extractor is here built in. We're going to press a little of this in here and press it. It'll get in them cracks. We're going to press that in there because we kind of want that protected. Think of it like this. If you got a tiny, tight-fitting moving part that doesn't move much, it's on the outside of your pistol. Just think about it. If you got the pistol in rain, if that little beady groove is filled with a little bit of oil, guess what? The water's not going to get through. So think about it that way. All right. The barrel right here. We drop it in. Oops. Hang on. Got to have it turned just right. All right, barrel's in. Now, this right here, I for, almost forgot, the, uh, the guide rod springs. Let's lube them up just a little bit. Let's get a little lube on there. You know, just a little. You don't want it dry. It's moving parts, it's metal. You do not want it dry. Don't want to soak it, but it cannot be dry. All right, so this is lubed. So basically what we do, guys, we take, we push this up in here like so, and this puppy, this goes up in here like this. Well, hold on. Gotta make sure this is just right. Okay, there we go. All right. Took a little trickery, but now it's in there. Sorry about that. All right, now you'll know it's in there when everything looks nice and neat and you turn it to the side and there's no nothing bulging right here. 
So basically that's it on this. Okay, so now that's lubed. Now what we got to do is the uh, the slide channels. Put a little on there, guys. Just a little bit. A little on the inside. Not much. Slide channels. A little bit of lube. Don't have to overdo it. Just want to see it on there. Okay. Right there. On the back. On the inside, you can if you want to, but the more lube that's on that plastic, you know, the only the only problem with that is, uh, it. And the, if you got too much lube, what happens is, you want those channels lube. What happens is all the dust, any extra dust or debris, will stick to it. So if it's too wet, it becomes a vacuum cleaner for all the crap. But all the moving parts, I do want anything metal it's got to have a little bit of that on there make sure even though there's this is carbon fiber i make sure that there is something on here because you don't see it it's got to be lubed okay all right we're gonna do just a little on the sugar down here little bit in the trigger assembly all right so basically oh forgot one thing sorry the pen that pen's got gunk on it get it off a little bit of lube on the pen right there put it back together there all right so we're good to go every assembled part that we're fixing to throw back together it's got a little bit on it. So, what we do is, we come back down, we line up our channels, we slide it back right there. We slide this back to where that is lined up. Take our pin, put it in, slaps. Now, I pushed it all the way in and then I let go of the slide, now it's locked. Now here's how you test it. Now you see that? Very smooth. Now, sometimes when you put all that lube on them channels, look at the ends right here, and then look at the back. Sometimes you'll see a little lube coming out of them channels. That's okay. All you gotta do is take your washcloth, or your rag, wipe it down, wipe the front down nothing to it now this this feels like a buttered cast iron skillet it is so smooth <sighs> so anyway lock it open as you can see now see i've worked that a few times and here's what i'm going to do now that she's back together I'm gonna lock it open i'm going to put a little more dab of the lube right on the end of this barrel because you do not want this spot and you'll see with repeated firing sometimes the end of that barrel will get will wear a white spot on it to where the bluing is wore off the parkerizing is wore off because you've got metal on metal contact you know you don't want that you're gonna get it but you want metal on metal to always have a little bit of that lube on there uh guys thank you for you know sitting in on all this i know some of it was probably long and monotonous but you know uh basically you know that's it uh i'm gonna put just a little bit on this magazine because i haven't just a coating very very little but you'll notice that if you keep things slightly lubed you'll have less wear and tear on everything because uh, if you use anything hard like I do, um, it'll just last longer. Metal is corrosive. Almost all types, even if it's stainless steel, aluminum, uh, a different chemicals, different conditions, cold, hot, it will wear 
and there's one easy way to keep it from wearing prematurely and that is to uh you know clean it properly and you know put the lube on it but anyway guys uh, you know thanks for watching and uh you know this is the iron woodsman signing out have a good rest of the day